Is time rotting our film records? To our grandchildren, screen stars of today may be as invisible as the face of Cleopatra. By Lynn Fairfield. Motion Picture Classic. September 1928. A hundred years from now, Rod LaRoque said tragically, if people look at our pictures at all, it will be as curiosities. Our names will be forgotten. They will laugh at us. A hundred years from now, what will be left of the pictures we make today? Pictures that each one cost more than the building of a pyramid. How many times we hear sentimentalists bewail the fact that the movies had not been invented centuries ago, so that we might look on the fabled beauties of Helen with our own eyes and say with a sniff, well, I don't see anything to make such a fuss about in her. Or watch Cleopatra gliding down the Nile on her flower-decked barge in some BC newsreel. But even if there had been a camera grinding when the wooden horse moved on the walls of Troy, even if Anthony had wooed Cleopatra in a screen close-up, these things would probably have disappeared long ago. For the fame of the movies is a chemical fame. The exotic loveliness of a Garbo, the romantic passion of a Valentino, are held caught in a film of jelly smeared on a substance composed of gun cotton and camphor, ether and alcohol. This is celluloid. The action of air on celluloid is slowly but surely to destroy it. Heat dries up film, makes it brittle, humidity dissolves it, light turns it brown. Even the pictures made ten years ago show plainly the devastating effect of time. No art in the history of the world has ever been so temporary as that of the motion pictures. Where the ancients immortalized their heroes and heroines in marble, we capture ours on a two-inch strip of film. Where earlier craftsmen kept a record of their times on canvas or tapestry, we entrust the chronicling of our day to the news camera. With what result? The screen idols of 20 years ago, Arthur Johnson, Mary Fuller, Florence Turner, names as beloved as Pickford and Fairbanks today, have completely disappeared. Not a scrap of film with their face on it remains. In those days, no one thought of the movies as anything but a temporary device for amusement. As soon as a picture was out of date, the film was destroyed. It is only comparatively recently that studios have even considered preserving some of their best pictures for future generations. Will our great-grandchildren be able to look at the faces which make our hearts beat faster? In 2028, will John Gilbert still swashbuckle across the screen and Clara Bow show the flappers of the future that quaint historical phenomenon known as it? Will the school children who study about the Great War and Lindbergh's flight across the Atlantic be able to watch the actual scenes enacted before their very eyes? For 20 or more years, the Smithsonian Institute in Washington, D.C. has been systematically collecting and preserving the news films which seemed worthy of being kept as historical data. When famous players made The Rough Riders recently, the studio was able to incorporate in the picture an actual scene of Roosevelt giving his inaugural address, reprinted from the negative in the vaults of the Smithsonian. There are miles of war scenes shot at the front during the World War, glimpses of the famous men and women of our times, newsreel pictures of naval engagements, disasters, national celebrations, all of them sealed in airtight containers and hidden away in underground storehouses where the temperature never varies. Exactly how well those films are lasting, it is difficult to say, because these sealed containers are seldom opened. But Mr. Nicholas, head studio technician at Metro Goldwyn Studio, is not sanguine. The most important thing in preserving a film is that the hypo shall be thoroughly washed out of it, and that it shall be dried slowly, he says. But most newsreel pictures are hurried through the developing bath in order to get them on the screens as soon as possible. People are impatient. They want to read about their floods and their horse races and their aeroplane flights in their morning papers, and see them at the neighborhood theaters that same evening. When you treat film in this way, it can't last very long. The chemicals left on the film after its hasty bath will eat into it in time. You can make perfect prints from newsreel film, but most prints are made as hurriedly as the rest of the process. We're not concerned with the future in this business, yet. When the American Museum of Natural History recently sealed 200,000 feet of film showing wild animal life in African jungles away in vacuum containers and stored in its archives not to be opened for half a century, it was done in the belief that by that time, wild animal life would have disappeared from the globe with the rush of swarming populations to conquer the remaining vacant lands. In this way, they hoped to keep the elephant, the tiger, the giraffe from the fate of the mastodon and the dinosaur, and show the children of a generation without zoos or circuses the strange lost citizens of the jungle world. 
Everything possible has been done to preserve this film for the future, but the newsreel shots of Lindbergh, the hero of the hour, will last an even shorter time than the memory of his flight. In the feature pictures, almost no attempt has been made to keep a print for tomorrow's fans. Mary Pickford and Douglas Fairbanks have several of their films sealed in lead containers, with printed directions for opening at a date several hundred years hence. Metro-Goldwyn and other big companies have begun to can their biggest features. There is a possibility that The Big Parade and The Trail of 98 may be shown in a world unlike the one we live in now, a world where war is as archaic as the Black Death, and air travel has brought Alaska into the position of a suburb of San Francisco. If studio technicians should experiment in methods of preserving film indefinitely, or devise a more permanent kind of film, the stars of the present might hope for lasting fame. Or it would be possible to keep a negative for 50 years, then make a duplicate on a fresh film and repeat the process endlessly, so that posterity will have a moving record of life today.